Okay, I'm back. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a mess. I just brushed all my hair out. It's all frizzy now. Who cares? All right, so I can't sleep as usual. I have one of those um, homeopathic dissolve tabs under my tongue. It's it really doesn't work. I guess it, on occasion, on occasion it does, and usually it's a psychological thing. It's <sighs> yeah, whatever. All right, so what the fuck's been going on? A lot's been going on. I've been really busy. And I've been watching a lot of SNL reruns. I don't know why. <laughs> Just good ones, the good times, when they ha actually had a good show. I don't know what happened to it. This last week was kind of funny with Ryan Gosling. All right, let me look up some... Oh, God, Coachella's everywhere. It's all over the place. And even back in the day, I wouldn't really go to events like that. I'm really not into crowds. So, um, yeah, that doesn't sound fun at all. It just doesn't sound fun being in the desert like that. <sighs> okay, let's see what's going on. There's really nothing going on. I have Surrey Cruz is going to be turning um, 18 soon. So everyone thinks that she might speak out about what's going on with Scientology, her and her dad, or what have you. I doubt it. The thing is, she looks exactly like him. And I just can't believe that he would choose Scientology over his own child. Like, that's him. That's just... She has his face. She's so cute. She's really pretty. His smile, too. If you look at her with his smile... Like, that's just it's Tom Cruise, man. And the fact that he would not care about getting to know her is really fucked up. I've never been attracted to him because of his personality, because he was so arrogant and cocky and all of that. And so he was someone I wasn't attracted to. I was definitely attracted to, like, Rob Lowe and, you know, people like that. Certain guys like that. Uh... Roblo didn't think he was good looking. You know, he always seemed kind of like embarrassed about being good looking. But Tom was never that good looking, but he seemed like he thought he was better looking than people thought he was. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. You know, those guys that just think they're all that. And it's, all right, let's see what's going on. Celebrity gossip. All right. This is what I do when I have absolutely nothing left to do. You know, when I can't sleep and I'm like, ugh. Um, celebrity culture is something that I'm not into. I remember when um, <clears throat> I was a teenager and I was kind of coming out of it. I remember thinking how ridiculous it all was. And I still feel that way. But at the same time, we live in a world where everything kind of centers around them. We never leave high school. We really don't. And so if I'm bored, I'll talk about them. But they don't affect my life. I don't, I don't care about them. I don't want to be one of them. But yeah, you know what? If I can't sleep at night and I want to like see what's up, I'll, I'll come on here and I'll talk about it. Okay, so Kelly Clarkson's ex hits back at her new lawsuit after a $2.6 million ruling. I don't even know what's going on with them. They're going through a divorce. I don't really listen to her music, but I love her. I think she looks great. She lost a lot of weight. I don't know. It's it's so complicated. Divorce and all of that seems so complicated. Oh, wow. Okay. Mama June. You know, Honey Boo Boo's uh, mom. That whole family is just... Should never have been on TV. It was ridiculous. I guess she um, is starting weight loss injections. After gaining 130 pounds. Just lose weight on your own. Injections, really. I'm, I'm not comfortable in my own skin right now either. You know, I put on some weight. I don't feel like... Great. You know, like I, I usually do. 
um, have some sort of confidence. I don't have that. And so, yeah, of course I want to take a pill or just get injections. But I'm doing it the hard way. I've been working out. <laughs> you kind of have to. And especially when you hit a certain age, you just can't get away with that anymore. So people that have that kind of money, they're like, oh, just give me some injections. It just pisses me off. Okay, um, and there's fucking Taylor Swift again. There's just, she's all over Coachella. It's whatever. So over it. Like, I respect her. She's a hard worker. Uh, she obviously has some talent. She is a positive influence. But I'm just not a Swifty. It's no big deal. It's just... I don't dislike her. Uh, oh, God, what else? Oh, my God. So stupid. Um, oh, Charlie Spelling. I haven't seen videos of her lately, and she's just kind of a mess, and she can't afford to get her things out of um, storage. I don't know. I, I really like Tori Spelling. I really root for her. I don't think her addiction to shopping and what have you is really her fault. I mean, Randy, her brother, seems to be doing okay. But I feel like growing up, you know, the way that she did with the movie theater and a bowling alley in her house. And I kind of blame the parents. You know, I feel like if you want your kids to turn out okay, regardless if you're here or not, you know, he had to know that someday he's going to die somebody he's not going to be there just let your kids have a normal fucking life you know even if you can buy all of that and live in a big house like that with like 15 bathrooms 20 bathrooms whatever I just think it's ultimately damaging to your children in the end so there's that um Tori Spence says she has the lady parts of a 14 year old what she said, Tori Spelling says she has the lady parts of a 14-year-old. Okay, when did she lose her virginity? <laughs> after a, after five C-sections intact. Okay, I don't even know why she had to bring that up. I, I don't even want to visualize it. I don't want to know. I Sometimes less is more. Just sometimes you need to shut the hell up. I don't know what's going on with her. But like I said, I still like her and I'm, I'm rooting for her. Uh, what else? What else is going on? This is what I do. I go on my extra phone to read this shit. Okay, Jenna Jameson and wife. I didn't know she was in that type of relationship. Are divorcing over um, the former porn star's alleged drinking. That would be so hard to be a porn star and try to be in a normal relationship. I know that some people do it. I just can't imagine being able to do that. And I think it's really unfair. I know this, this sounds horrible and very judgy. I'm just in that mood right now, but I just don't think if you're, you've done that, if you're a porn star and you've done this kind of life that you should bring children into it. You know, I know that she has a kid, especially if you're drinking, you're doing drugs, you have that lifestyle. This is all this, this is all they're going to see, you know? Yeah, you know what? I did nude modeling, you know, stuff like that. I have no regrets about it whatsoever. I wouldn't be embarrassed about my kids seeing the stuff that I've done if I had kids. I wouldn't be like, oh, no, I was, you know. But I think if you're full-blown porn and, like, really raunch, hardcore porn, I just feel like they has to be traumatizing on some, on some level. It just does. So there's that part of me that judgy part of me that's like, don't have kids. Please don't have kids. What? Oh, God, whatever. <laughs> it's funny. Um, Christy Teigen defends uh, Jeff Bezos' fiance, Lauren, uh, Lauren Sanchez, after Keith. I don't even know who Keith McCallie is. I think that's Mc McNally? McNally. Calls her revolting. What an ugly fucking smug looking couple they make <laughs> that's what he said I don't know why he said it I don't know I do think that Jeff Bezos is a disgusting piece of shit I love his ex-wife um, Mackenzie Scott she donates a lot of money to worthwhile causes she's an amazing human being without him without her that business would have never happened 
she gave up a lot to help him work on that business out of a garage. And so he goes off with uh, Lauren Sanchez, who for some reason is looking more and more like a man, tranny. I don't know why. And I have nothing against trans. But like, I just feel like she's one of the biggest gold diggers I've, I've seen in a long time. Oh, God, she just said she, it's lots of money. Like she has it, like it's her own and that's okay. They've been together. So, but she wears like Gucci Prada and she's always flashing it. I hate those people that have a Gucci tank top and it has to say Gucci across it because you know that tank top costs like two or $3,000, just like the one I have on, but it's like, yeah, we know it. We know you're wearing something very expensive. You don't have to display it. Or they have a hat that says Gucci all over it, a Prada, and something like that. I don't think Prada is that big of a deal anymore, but you know what I mean? That's annoying. Um, what else is going on? Yeah, just a lot of, you know, Taylor Swift and Travis, you know, all of that shit that I don't really give a fuck about. <laughs> oh, and the bikini clad Salma Hayek. I don't know. I mean, I know she's married to a very, very rich man and I'm not saying she's a gold digger. I, I suspect she might've been, uh, but she married him. I don't know. Uh, but she looks amazing. I don't know what he's, what kind of treatments he's getting her, but, uh, she's gorgeous. She always has been. She always will be having money helps, you know? So there you go. And then, um, what else? Keanu Reeves kisses his girlfriend. Ooh, that's news. He kisses his girlfriend. I love his girlfriend. People are like, oh, she looks so old. Why? Because she has gray hair. We're not allowed to have gray hair as we age, I guess, because her body's banging. I mean, she's really pretty. There she is right there. I like them together. You know, she's, I think she's an artist. She... Yeah, she just, she, she decided on her own, like, I'm going to rock this gray motherfucking hair. I don't give a fuck. And it works for her. I like the fact that she just, she is who she is. And I've never really had a crush on Kiana. But as I've gotten older, I think he's amazing. You know, I'm like, wow, he's a really good person. And that's a, that's a huge turn on when somebody's a decent human being, especially in times like this, where the world is such an ugly place. When you see people being decent and kind and good, um, yeah, it's a turn on. All right, so that's about it. That's all that's going on. Oh, here he kisses her. All right, this is the picture that's got the news. It looks really awkward. It really does. I mean, I know it's real, but I think that the paparazzi or what have you, they probably got them to do it. The photogs, they're probably like, oh, just kiss for us. Come on, just kiss, kiss her, kiss her. He's probably like, fuck it. <laughs> it's funny. Um, I feel sorry for people who are famous almost. I don't because they get paid well to be famous. I would hate that life. Oh my God. I would hate that life because I hate being judged so harshly. Like I judge other people. <laughs> that was the worst. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, they deserve to even be paid more sometimes for what they have to endure. It's exhausting. It looks like I hung around people who had that kind of fame for a bit and it was just being around them was exhausting. And I think it was the big, reason why I kind of left the business and said, ah, I don't think I want this. And I was reading some of my old diaries the other day and yeah, when you're young, everything's so exciting and you see stars in your eyes and everything's so magical. And then as you get older, you're like, God, that's all bullshit. It's all fucking bullshit. None of it really matters. And your circles get smaller and smaller and you realize what really matters and the people that you really care about are the ones you should focus on. Not things, you know, and not people that you don't know, even though I've been talking about these people I don't know for 14 minutes, but I'd rather do that than be fake, you know, be someone that acts like I'm above it. None of us are above anything. That's what I've realized too. We all escape some way or another mentally from things that are going on in the world. 
and uh, that's that. All right, so I think that's all the news. Oh, OJ died. Yeah, I buried the lead. I did. I don't give a fuck though. That's why I don't really care that OJ died. I read the book. If I did it, which is now called I Did It, and it, it really is a confessional. So if you haven't read it yet, go read it. He goes into great detail. Every little step, every reason, all of his feelings, him being alone at the um, after the funeral at the uh, casket and talking to her, you know, and all of that. It's unbelievable. So everyone's like, oh, I wonder if he really did it. I wonder if there's a, you know, a confessional. Yeah, this is it. It wasn't a bedside confession. There might have been. There might have been a confession. No, this was it. That's when he confessed. And so, um, yeah, it's, he was... I don't think he's an evil human being, necessarily. I think that uh, with all the attention he got, he was very narcissistic. And um, I think it, it that her, in particular, this anger he had jealousy so jealous he, he describes it in the book you have to read the book I never wanted to read it because I was like I want to know what the hell he says it's spot on you know all the reasoning behind what happened he's a very jealous man he thought she well he thought they were going to get back together basically he's like oh we're going to get back together everything seemed okay you know and she was hanging around the wrong people I was just so she was partying with her friends and she never really had a chance to be young because he met her when she was like 16, I think, 17, something like that. And um, he was very abusive to her. Everyone knows that. There's um, the 911 calls. But he didn't like the fact that she was doing her own thing. He didn't want that around his kids, he said. But the truth is he didn't want it from her. And he even caught her. He didn't catch her, but he saw her through a window making out with somebody else before they were going to talk about getting back together. So it's accumulated in a lot of anger, a lot of resentment. And um, he didn't want her to ruin his kids and all this bullshit, which is obviously not the reason. And Ron just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was bringing back some sunglasses that she had left at the restaurant. They didn't really know each other that well. They were definitely not fucking. He tried to come to her defense. He basically walked in on her being killed. And so... Yeah, they, it was a nightmare. I can't even imagine. But he, he didn't run. He sat there and he tried to help her. Uh, there's defensive wounds. So that means he was fighting with him. And um, he went there. He had, okay, he acts like it was an accident even in the book. Like, I don't know what happened. She was screaming at me and she was hitting me. He claims in the book where he confesses that she was punching at him and he was trying to restrain her. And that, I think he even said she had the knife. I it's been so long since I've read that book. But he shows up there with, he's wearing gloves. And he goes through, he even says this, as he describes how he parks in the alley and he comes through the back way. Only the killer would know that. And why was Ron Goldman's blood in his car? Why would, it wouldn't happen. There's so much blood evidence that people don't realize. All right, so... <sighs> Basically, he tries to say that it, it was a, a, a moment of passion. Uh, but, you know, when you're when it just happens upon you, you know, you it's in a moment of heat, heated exchange. You don't wear gloves. You know, he, he went there wearing the gloves. So that tells me that it was definitely premeditated. And um, I don't think he obviously he didn't know Ron was going to be there. So there's that. There's the, yeah, buried the lead. Now I'm talking about it. And I don't care anymore. He's, he is where he is. I do believe there's a heaven and a hell, and I think he's in hell. And he's dealing with what he did. So there's that. All right, I think I'm finally tired enough to go to bed. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning, I think, 3.30. Peace out. Hope everyone's doing well.